They didn't do their homework. They just dismissed him. Discounted him. They saw no need to seek the truth. But guess what? Nicodemus, he continued to seek the truth and he found him. So you have the convinced, the contrary, the confused, and the contemplative. Which are you? Which are you? Have you thirsted, come, and drank from the water that Jesus gives? You say, well, what do I have to do? Well, recognize your need of Christ by seeing your sinfulness and then come to Jesus as the only one who can quench your spiritual thirst and drink or appropriate his life by faith. Let me say it in other words. Repent and surrender your life to Christ. And then you're drinking of that water that he gives. One of the things that we pray here, and we know very clearly not everybody that's in the room is saved. I wish the opposite was true. The thing is, we don't always know who that they are, right? Because it's so easy for us to put on airs and to put up all these religious attitudes. But beloved, God knows who you are. He knows who you are. And though you may deceive everyone else in this room, you can't deceive him. He is the one who tests the hearts and the mind. And so I want to encourage you today. Don't run from him. Don't think you can hide. Adam thought he could hide. Him and his wife, after they took of that forbidden fruit and their eyes were open. And when God asked him, Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking him, you know, where are you hiding? He was asking him, where has this got you now? See, we hold on to things. I held on to so many things. When that gospel was preached to me there's several times, and I thank the Lord that he had mercy on me and allowed me to hear it a third time. And it was that third time when everything broke loose. I stopped holding on to the world. Sad thing for many Christians They forget about their conversion. They forget about where they were when God saved them and they go back and pick up things in the world again. Even though deep down they don't have any satisfaction with it, but it's the allurement and the attraction, the fact that it's hard to fight it, they don't resist any longer. But beloved, we're told in Scripture to kill the deeds of the flesh. Specifically, we're told that. We're told in Romans 8 that you do it by the Holy Spirit. So that tells us that we can't do it in the flesh. We can't do it on our own. We have to do it in a complete dependence on the Spirit of God. And if I have to be in complete dependence on the Spirit of God to deal with sin in my life and to live this life in a way that's pleasing to Him, to obey Him, then that means there has to be a death of self all the time. All the time. We quote that statement that Paul says, the things I don't want to do, I do. The things I do, I don't want to do. Well, that's true about the flesh. But is that true about your life? You know you need to be in the Word, and you're not. Or you come at it in a hit-and-miss fashion. You could take it or leave it on some days. Some people treat church that way. They don't think of it as being something really important, that they're coming together with the family of God to corporately worship God. They can take it or leave it. If something else comes up, they'll gravitate over there and do that. Something happens to fall on Sunday. Monster trucks. It didn't fall on Sunday, but if it was that, would that pull you away? Or if it's a quote-unquote Christian concert, like tonight, Chris Tomlin, great musician. But there are some churches that do have a Sunday night. We don't have a Sunday night service. And they'll take off just for that. And, And they just treat worship so... They're so fickle about it. And they say, well, God understands. And then they wonder why they have no 
victory in their lives. They wonder why their lives are such a mess, such a wreck. Maybe some of us in here need to surrender again. I'm not saying get saved again. Don't, don't get me wrong here. Uh, John 13, Jesus says to Peter, he who needs a bath only needs to be bathed one time, but he needs his feet washed daily, right? You don't need another bath if you've been saved, but you do need your feet washed every day. And Jesus said he will wash your feet. Are you letting him cleanse you? Are you letting him have that full control of your life? Or are you trying to live your life the way you think you should live? Are you telling God, I, I know better? And every time we sin, every time we disobey him, every time we put the word in a corner and don't pick it up or don't listen to scripture, or don't listen to the word being taught or go to church or any of those things, we're saying, I know better. So I want to encourage you as we pray, I mean, if that hits any of you, if it hits one of you, then the Holy Spirit had his reason for me to say it. I didn't plan to say any of that. So let's go to him now. And let's just ask for his mercy once again. Father, we thank you for your word today. We ask that you would just cause us to hear what we need to hear today out of this message. I pray, Father, for each person in here in this, this crowd, Lord. There's some that are convinced, some that are contrary, some that are confused, some that are contemplated. Lord, I pray that if there's someone in here and they see their real need, that they truly do thirst that they would come to Jesus and that they would drink. And for those who have seen that need and those who have come to him, those who have drank of that water, I pray, Lord God, that we would renew afresh our commitments, like Peter said, to add to our faith. And if we're not adding to our faith these virtues, then we're short-sighted. We forget that we have been delivered from our sins. We're caught up in the things of the world like, like Lot. His righteous soul was vexed daily by the activity that he saw and experienced there in Sodom. And Lord, you pulled him out of that. Pull us out of that. If we have been so weighed down with the world that the world has become so much of us, that we're worldly, Lord, pull us from that. Forgive us, Lord. So, Lord, I just ask that your spirit will do that work in each of us now. We ask in your name. Amen.